And welcome into PressBox Live. I'm Stan the Fan Charles of PressBox and PressBoxOnline.com. With me on this evening's uh, festivities is Gary Stein. Gary, how are you? Yes, sir. Stan the Fan, how are you, my friend? All right, I'm ready to kick it around with you, all right? Because <laughs> we're going to be stuff. talking in just a moment to one of the guys that makes soccer happen in Baltimore. And we'll find out also about his other company. He has two companies, Elite promotions group which brought us the everton uh versus uh why do i have my notes arsenal the, yeah arsenal and everton match that was held on july 16th at mnt bank stadium all right guy i'm thrown <laughs> off but let me get my com- let me get my commercial in and then i can make less of a fool of myself we're brought to you each and every time we go in the zoom by the cost of sin and Acosta Sin is located 4100 North Point Boulevard, and they are one great place. Everybody in Baltimore knows preeminent place to get your steamed crabs, your crab cakes, your crab soup, steaks, ribs, whatever it is you want, get it at the Acosta Sin. they got TVs all throughout the place, but if you're not yet comfortable sitting inside, easy, easy solution. Go to CostasIn.com. Order your food, pay for it online, and pick it up curbside. They do a phenomenal job. That's the Costas Inn, 4100 North Point Boulevard, phone number 410-477-1975. Our guest is Mike Libber, whose two groups, uh, Elite Promotions Group and uh, Elite, why do I not have, help me, Mike. Elite Tournaments. Tournaments. Elite Tournaments. I, I I lost it. Somehow I didn't write it down here. Elite tournaments. Stanley, you know what? I think I should handle this part of the show. What do you think about <laughs> it? From now, from now on, after tonight, after tonight. Mike, I apologize about that. Oh, it's all good. It's let's all get good. down to business. I met you the night that we had tremendous disappointment here in the city of Baltimore when we found out that Maryland, uh, you know, Maryland, Washington was not going to host a World Cup game in uh, 2026 and uh, Pete Corinthi had introduced us that night when we were still very optimistic uh, what do you think happened to, to the effort in this part because I you know I know Terry Hazeltine and he doesn't miss much so I know the effort was there and he thought he was checking all the boxes what suddenly happened in your estimation uh, I mean there could be a lot of things it, it, FIFA definitely changes their mind uh, and that they're not set in anything that they're not willing to do. Um, but I, they, there's r- always rumors going around. I don't want to point fingers or anything like that, but I think that uh, I think we put a tremendous bid in. We have one of the best stadiums in the country. Um, we have the, the fever for soccer in, in the region. Um, not only the fan base, but we produce some very talented players. Um, uh, ben Bender down in Charlotte right now is doing fantastic stuff, and he's a Bal- he's a Baltimore guy. Yeah. Uh, he's drafted number one in the MLS draft, so that's huge. Um, and we had the Santino Carantas back in the uh, in the late '90s, early 2000s. So um, I, I I just think it, it didn't fit into FIFA's story. So. It's so a, let me the best ask way you, I can put it. All right. So let me ask you, because we're going to get into talking about the Everton Arsenal match that you promoted July the 16th. In reading about that match, I read that it's the first Division I soccer match in Baltimore in 10 years. Yeah. So if we do things and soccer is popular in Baltimore, why did we fall off and not have games? I know back in 2011, we weren't thinking about the 2026 yeah, yeah. World Cup, but why, if they were that popular, did we not have one for 10 years? It, it really comes down to the promoters who promote the games. Um, at, at the time, uh, there, there was a particular promoter that was had a, had a stronghold on, on the market, and they, they had a great success story when we had Chelsea play at m and um, I believe against AC Milan, and then we had Man City come in uh, the following year. And then a couple of years later, we had Tottenham against Liverpool in, in 2012. Uh, and then after that, it, it just wasn't on their radar. Um, they were looking at the big cities like the, the New York's, the LA's, the Miami's, 
um, Dallas, probably. Dallas, um, Seattle. I mean, they were they were looking at the the large complexes, and it all comes down to what their benefit they get from it. Um, they're the ones that were putting up the the underwriting, so they have the the right to say, hey, we're going to move this game here and this game here, and we're, we're going to skip over Baltimore. They went to Philly. Um, it was just, uh, and, and we had, at the time, we had artificial turf, too. So we had to lay sod over top of the turf. Right. And it, in 2012, it wasn't the best um, sod that we got on that on that turf. And if you remember, it was about 100 degrees, and we played it in the afternoon, and it was just, it, it was a it was a tough match to play on with the, with the pitch the way it was and for the fans to really enjoy. Um, but since then, we did have the Gold Cup. So you can't right. remember, you can't, the Gold Cup was very successful. I think we had the attendance record for the Gold Cup um, the one the one year that we did host it. Um, I think we've hosted it two or three years of, in, in that time. And then we're, we're hopefully trying to get that for next year as well. All right. Before I turn you over to Gary for some questions, I do have to ask you about one thing. So, so our listeners, viewers get a grasp of this. A lot of times we don't understand the term, the friendlies and all that. Yeah. This is essentially exhibition season for those teams. But it's unlike Bruce Springsteen. If he's going to tour the United States, he's got 40 or 50 cities he can choose to go right. to. How many games total in a given year are there that are friendlies? I mean, is it uh, are, there, are there 40 games or is it about six or seven? Yeah, I mean the, the teams will play. Their their preseason will start in early July, um, depending on the league. Some leagues start a little bit sooner because of their geographic location. Like um, I believe Scotland starts their season this coming weekend, because um, and, and Champions League actually starts playing this coming uh, August second. I believe is when Champions League starts their qualifying rounds um, to f finalize that that last stage. Um, but they usually play about four to six games. Um, it's kind of like an NFL preseason. They'll they'll travel um, and they 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 want to target communities and cities that their marketing team is saying, hey, we need to hit this this area because it's a strong. We have a strong fan base there, and we want to expand our brand and create fans for life and things of that nature. And and D and DC Baltimore region is is a destination um we have we have gone to there's been matches in dc in the past um but they've only been they've, they've never had a weekend match really they've always been a mid-wednesday mid-tuesday game or in a week and trying to get down there with traffic can it, it's it's we all know the capital beltway could be a a pain in the butt so all right, i just drove it the other day absolutely <laughs> yep yep hey um mike t take us through like how the game actually gets to happen Mm -hmm. like like who are the key players is there so, a promoter yeah who gets so, the teams how, how does it all happen so basically i i'm a licensed fifa match agent so we approached arsenal and arsenal it kind of it was kind of mutual they approached us and we kind of communicated with them um they said they were interested in coming into the united states they had some matches down in in florida that were already on the radar because they were scheduled for the year before, but they canceled because of COVID. But they were looking for that third match. So we had a contact in Arsenal who knew us. Um, they contacted us, say, hey, can you help us find a venue that will host us for, for the summer? And this is our time frame here. So from there, we, because um, I'm on the world, I was on the World Cup committee for Baltimore. Obviously, I have an inside track with Baltimore. Um, we reached out to the Ravens and said, this is the team that wants to come. Um, are you interested? And they said, yes. And they said, who's the opponent? And at, at, at first we, we actually went through three different opponents. We were supposed to first have, um, club America and then club America got a, I would say a, a better offer. They, they, they got another opportunity to play in Las Vegas, which suits their, geographic area much better because their their fan base is heavy in the west coast so they wanted to go to las vegas and they end up playing chelsea which is good for them um actually on the same date that we played had the everton um arsenal match and then we had roma has a backup 
So Roma was the second team that we scheduled. Then they had some conflicts that internally, and they decided not to even come to the United States. So then we had a list of teams that we were in talks with, and we sat down with the Ravens and had a conversation. And we all thought that the best matchup would be another EPL team, English Premier League team. So we went with Everton, who does have a strong fan base in the United States um, because of Tim Howard. Um, and they, they've had a couple, they've had uh, another American that played for him as well. But Tim Howard is their, is their, is their guy. Um, and he's being a U.S. national team goalkeeper for so many years. So they, they had, we thought that that was a really good fit for Baltimore. And it turned out to be, um, we hit 40,000 fans. So that was, we told them from the start, we think it was going to be between 35 and 40,000 people. And when we hit 40, I looked at my partner and just said, I mean, this is great stuff. So um, mm -hmm. that's that's basically Arsenal. We talk with them. We approach the Ravens, and then we broker Elite Promotions brokers the deal between the Ravens and Arsenal to make sure everybody's on the same page. The Ravens are getting the best out for their buck, and Arsenal is getting the best um, deal possible as long as, as well as Everton. Um, so with yeah, so Mike, so so with no disrespect to any. EPL team or an Italian team, any international team, the U.S. national team also plays friendlies all over the country. They do. How do we get them to come to Baltimore? Is Baltimore important to them? It 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 is. Um, their so they, their decisions to go to certain venues. Um, it could be the coach that wants to be in a certain geographic area because of we saw it during a World Cup qualifying. He wanted to play in the coldest. Um, spot possible when they were playing. I, I want to say, was it Costa Rica or I can't remember what? Uh, yeah, Central, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was. I think it was in Minnesota, and it was like four degrees because um, <laughs> they see that has a tactical advantage for them. Right. Um, I don't see at four degrees a tactical advantage for anyone, but um, <laughs> there are certain aspects that go into play um, when it comes to that stuff. And the U.S. national team, besides besides the U.S. Uh, I'm sorry, the Gold Cup, they've never played in in Baltimore before they used oh, to play in RFK right. a lot um right. and they did well at RFK with with attendance but uh Baltimore just hasn't been on the radar they're they're they tend to go to a lot of MLS side stadiums um one because they know they'll be able to sell out they want that that 20 to 30,000 uh seat ratio um coming to Baltimore depending on the, who the opponent is and and time of year it they would it would be hard to sell out the bottom bowl um because we we just have so much other stuff going on and and i mean we're going up against the nfl season and uh and because of our that where mnt bank is if there's an oriole game we can't play either so right. because of parking and everything so it we're kind of in a bad spot when it comes to scheduling for outside events that are non-normal than, than the raven season or oriole season it, it has to be the like the perfect scenario where it does fit in and we were lucky you really to have to Everton. thread you have to thread a needle there yeah there's a lot of obstacles that you really that people don't think about that really come into play gareth you you just mentioned rfk stadium mm -hmm. i just happened to be in dc over the weekend passed by rfk stadium on the way out it's interesting they haven't really played anything at rfk stadium in what maybe 10 15 years i'd say 10 what, years what's the plan what's their that? plan for that i mean it, it's one it's a national monument so it's I, mm. I i last time i and i could be wrong but because it's a national monument you have to get certain acts of congress to actually congress, demolish yeah. the, the facility um but i know the the parking lots because we utilize them for elite tournaments when we do events they've created soccer fields turf they have turf fields there so i think it's three or four fields that they have at the complex um that we utilize uh two or three times a year um i know they have some plans of kind of revitalizing that stadium i don't know exactly what it is but i know there's some type of plans where the community it's going to be like a community center and they're going to utilize the field and different aspects of the stadium are going to be used but it does need a major overhaul because Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I think the last game I was there, there was a piece of concrete that fell down uh, not far from where yeah. we were sitting. Um, 
So it's uh it it definitely needs some some it needs a it needs a facelift. Mm -hmm. So so talking about the the attendance at this game at right around forty thousand at the yep. Everton Arsenal match, and the experience that the teams had, did they leave positively talking about Baltimore or talking yeah, positively so. about Baltimore? Uh, whereas we might get traction when getting another match here, and would the would the game plan be? just to have them because it's a, it's a great to have an event and you as a promoter might make some money, but we're not looking at impressing anybody right now because the right. world cup probably won't come back to the United States until uh, we're all gone. Yeah. Probably. Not in our lifetime. Right. <laughs> um, I, I would say, well, one, I know for a fact that both teams had a great experience here. Um, Everton was based in DC. They were at actually at, um uh, Episcopal, I think they were Episcopal. Yep. Yeah, Episcopal High School in Alexandria. Uh, and then they were at the Four Seasons in, in DC. That's where they were staying. They had not too shabby. <laughs> yeah, great, great facilities. Um, they really a lot of a lot of their players have never been to the States before. So I know Lampard wanted to give them the experience of of DC because he's been over here before and um he was able to experience it. So I think they really enjoyed that aspect of it. Uh on Arsenal side, uh, they, I mean, they were state, they had the Pendry pretty much to themselves. Um, mm -hmm. And then they were tra training at the Naval Academy, which is a beautiful setting for anybody. I mean, it, it, we didn't have to worry about extra security. I mean, you, you, you drive in through the, the gates and you got a guy with an M16. There's, there, nobody's getting through to them. That's good. That's going to uh, put them in any danger, but they had a great experience there. Uh, Tim O'Donohue at the head coach and their their athletic director were outstanding hosts. Um, and then they trained. Uh, they they did train at UMBC on the the morning before the match because it was closer to the to the venue, um, which is just great. I mean, that's my alma mater. That's that's where I played and coached with Pete. And it's it's great to have some teams there um, as much as we can to get them some some notoriety and stuff, but uh, they think... did have, they did have some great, a great experience. Um, we actually heard from them after right, right when they were leaving to go home from Orlando. That is, is a deal ever cut quickly that based on their experience, say, Hey, we'd like to do that. And you go, Hey, let's, let's it, work it on be. that. It can be, but it's very rare for teams to commit to something for next summer already. Okay. Um, I would lie. If I told you we aren't in talks with them. We, I mean, we are, um, along with several other teams, um, not not for really Baltimore next year because we're going for the Gold Cup next year. So be, I think it would be in in Baltimore in the Ravens' eyes. I think it would be difficult to have two matches that close together um, mm -hmm. in the same month, which is it, which is fair enough. Um, but we we would love we're going to put a package together for the Ravens for 2024. That's our plan. Okay. Um, but we are talking with DC. We're talking with with a couple other, uh, we're talking with six cities. So up and down the East Coast and maybe a couple out West. Um, but we're, our plan is to do four to six matches next year. Mike, okay. you, you may not know the answer to this question. I, I know your company, you know, not only does these big events like the, mm -hmm. you know, Everton Arsenal match, but also youth lacrosse, youth soccer events, you know, up and down the East Coast, et cetera. And we can talk about that. But you know, it used to be that the that company is called that company is called Elite Tournaments, Gary. Oh, really? Okay, <laughs> yeah. thank you. You remember now? It. Stan remembered. <laughs> it's it's plastered all over his wall now. Great, right, um, great, right, great. Right. But the the NCAA tournament, the men's tournament, used to come, uh, you know, to M and T Bank Stadium. It was like a rotation. They did M and T Bank. They did uh, Lincoln uh, Financial Field and. Philly, uh, I think they were from Boston and Foxborough. Yeah, but, those are the three. Right, but right, but I think it hasn't been here now in I don't know. You tell me how many years, but it's been quite a while. Have they changed their strategy, and will it ever come back to a football type stadium like we have here? Um, I mean, it's at a football type stadium when it goes to Philly and when it goes to Foxborough. Um, right, but I don't think it's been there in a while either. Actually, no, it was. Uh, I want to say it was in. Was it Foxborough last year? It's, it, it could have been. I think, I think yeah. it was at UConn. I think it was at UConn. This, well, you, this I mean, UConn's year. still 60,000 seats as well. So um, right. I, 
tell, trying to decide, uh, decipher on what the NCAA does is like trying to figure out what FIFA does. Um, <laughs> it's hard. Uh, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I mean, they, uh, we used to manage a couple events for the NCAA on their, the men and women's uh, soccer championship. And we just, let's just put it this way that we don't do that anymore. And it wasn't their decision. It was ours. Um, gotcha. Okay. It's just, it's just uh, they, they, they change their mind on a lot of things, um, on how they want to do their goal, their vision, and trying to keep up with it. It's, it's, it's. And they never make it very clear to you what, what they're. They do not. They yeah. do not. So I mean, it was, it was, it was a great experience to work with NCAA and, and, um, put on the events for the four years that we did with them, but it, it really stressed out my staff and they're they're stressed enough um sure. and it, it was just a better decision decision for us to not renew that contract with them mm-hmm. it was it was uh I, I i can't tell you what they think and what what their um what their vision is on what the those championships should look like i think some of the people that work there think they all should be like the ncaa basketball tournament and we all know that that's not possible Mm -hmm. um that's its own animal and um there's just no way of replicating that Mm -hmm. so on the youth lacrosse and soccer right Mm -hmm. it's interesting i would assume that those two sports now are the biggest youth participation sports perhaps in this country and not lacrosse not lacrosse no okay no soccer soccer is but there's still baseball still up there and and basketball and are still up there pretty they're up there i think soccer is the most though okay lacrosse so, is growing so i noticed though right so i noticed though and correct me if i'm wrong that you don't do uh baseball or softball or basketball and no. i'm just wondering like how, how did you get yourself pigeonholed into lacrosse and soccer uh well we started in 20 in 2000 um actually when i was coaching at umbc uh, i was also coaching for the uh, baltimore bays soccer club of baltimore um, and I mean, it's a sport I grew up with. I played a curly. I was, I was player of the year, player of the year for the Baltimore sun in 93. Um, hey, congrats. I had a long time ago. Right. Um, <laughs> and I mean, played at UMBC, coached at UMBC and it, it's my life. Soccer is my life. Um, so we, we saw, I saw a void in people putting on good events and I enjoy organizing and I, I, I decided to put one on and it, it spread like wildfire. We got from there uh, after the first year, we got approached by two clubs, started working for one. And then after working for that one club for three years, we got approached by SAC, which is probably one of the biggest soccer associations of Columbia, which was yep. one of the biggest clubs in the area. And they have the big Memorial Day tournament. Um, and we took that from roughly 250 teams to, in 2021, it was our highest amount of teams. We had 800 teams. For one weekend. Um, That's great. Yeah. So I I started off by myself. um, And then my brother had always worked kind of part time with me. Um, My wife worked for US soccer. Um, She's my girlfriend at the time. And she left Chicago, came home, started working with me. Um, Then, then our first hire, which is our new CEO, Megan Schmidt, she coached and played at St. Mary's. She's a Southern Maryland girl. Um, oh, it's an all soccer thing. Not, not yeah, really, yeah soccer. Event. Yeah, my brother, he, he played soccer. He wasn't very good. He was more a lacrosse guy. Um, <laughs> and my brother, my brother worked for the board of elections and, and he started working with, with me full time in 2010. And now he, uh, he left in 2019, I think. And he runs the Maryland soccer plex out in Germantown. Um, mm. He's an executive director there. So he's, he's done very well for himself in the sports industry as well. Um, but now we have close to 20 employees full time. So it's it, we've really grown. We started we started working with the IWLCA, the women's side of lacrosse. Um, we run all of their events. And this has been a, uh, our second year doing that. Um, and it's it's been it's been great. I mean, lacrosse is a, definitely a different dynamic. Uh, uh, it's kind of the Wild West a little bit. They don't they don't have player cards and uh, it's a lot of. Uh, it's kind of like where soccer, youth soccer was in the 80s and 90s right now, 
it's kind of it, everybody's looking for that somebody to lead um, as yeah. an example. And hopefully we're going to be that per, that group that's going to be setting the example on what you the best practices on how to put on events. So I was <laughs> at the Oriole game today and I scanned your elite tournaments website. And I noticed that that whole list, I guess I was on the soccer thing. Yeah. You had like 50 events around the country. Yeah. How many yeah. of those events are held in the state of Maryland? I'd say close to half. Half of uh, but it, I mean, there's certain events that it's it's the same event, but it's over two weekends. We might have a boys weekend and a girls weekend. Um, I, I'd say there's probably like 16 weekends in Maryland. That's a lot so of events. It's, it's we're a major factor in the economic impact for for the state of Maryland and in in the sports industry, especially on the youth side. Um, so I mean, we do a lot of our stuff based out of Howard County, but we do stuff in when I mean, we had a we have an event over in June in Hagerstown. Right. Um, the Memorial Day tournament at one point was in Howard County, Montgomery County, Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, Baltimore City, Harford County, and Carroll County. So, all, all at the same, same time? time. All at the same time. All at the same yeah. time. Uh, yeah. It's organized. It's organized chaos. It was. I think it was like seventy different venues going off at one over the weekend. So when I say when I hear that it has that many teams, like five hundred teams or eight hundred mm -hmm. teams, those are teams coming into the state of Maryland from yeah, outside. Yeah, not all of them. State. I mean, I'd say certain events. Um, we we get half. Um, Memorial Day is. This past year was a little bit smaller, um, around 600 teams, and I'd say about half of them were from outside the state. Between right. so, so that brings a lot of dollars into uh, the state yeah. of Maryland. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the mm -hmm. one lacrosse event that we do um, brings a lot of teams. I mean, that was only 250 teams, but I think 200 of them were from out of state. Um, mm -hmm. So the hotels love us, the restaurants love us, the movie theaters, the the even the even the grocery stores. I mean, you you. When you can't get a, a seat at a, at a restaurant and you have all these kids running around in uniform, half the time it's because of us. So, Mike, so how, how difficult have the last couple of years been under the pandemic? I mean, you've got this sort of rocket ship taking off of your company and all of a sudden things are it, shutting down and all that. How did so, you keep it afloat? So um, we, we were lucky. Um, we actually, we had a rainy day fund. Um, I think we ended up laying off our employees for two days. Um, and then we found out we got the PPP and we brought them back. We didn't lower anyone's salaries. Right. Um, even the people that got laid off for those two days that we back paid them. Um, so they were made whole. Um, and we, we kind of expanded from because of the pandemic, to be fully honest. I mean, there was some of our competitors in the, in the Midwest and in the South and then out West, they didn't, they didn't have that rainy day fund or the capability to kind of push through it. And we, I mean, I, I, I guess when there's blood in the water, you strike, but we kind of had the, the infrastructure to, to take more on. And we were hiring people during, during this. Um, and I don't want to get into politics or anything, but I mean, we, it was it was funny that we weren't qualifying for certain grants in our own county and we were the ones kind of driving the economy a little bit when everybody was like out but and others were were really qualifying for it that i i just don't understand it but we because we weren't a storefront we weren't qualifying for anything it was it was a little frustrating um, had some harsh words for some politicians, but it is what it is. We we survived through it, and I mean, if it wasn't for my staff, really, it's they're the they're the backbone of this organization. Um, from from my wife all the way down to the interns that we have every year. So and just to do a reset for those who are turning in, we're talking to Mike Liber. He's got two company, Elite Promotions Group, and uh, also Elite Tournaments. Uh, they both have websites, elitetournaments.com and elitepromotionsgroup.com. Uh, Mike, I want to circle back to you, to, to the future of big-time soccer in Maryland. Did the fact that Baltimore has never had an MLS team or since way back the, from the Baltimore Bays back in the right. 70s, 
does the fact that Baltimore didn't have that kind of institutionalized soccer thing, did that hurt us in the big picture here right now? It, it, I mean, I think it had something to do with it. Um, I mean, if you look at every every city that was picked for the World Cup has an MLS team. Yeah. Um, but we were merged, we were going with DC, who has yeah. one of the most the best MLS teams in the history of the league. Um, if you want to get right down into it, I mean, DC was very successful in the early years. They had a couple other years that they were successful, but everyone knows who DC United is, um, especially in the in the European uh, uh, platform as well. So I think it may have had a little bit to do with it. Um, and you, I mean, and then you, you I mean, you, have, you can't not say. Baltimore is, I mean, we have some issues in Baltimore. Yeah, it's, there's no question. I was born and bred in Hollandtown. So I, I know Baltimore. I, I, I bleed Baltimore. Um, I had to go put on a polo shirt. I had a Baltimore Orioles shirt on before this interview came on. And my wife's like, I don't think you should wear that shirt for the interview. Um, so uh, I think it would I think it I, would I mean, have been I'm, great. I'm an Orioles on guy. The, especially I got, on the day that Trey Mancini hit an inside oh, the I park home great. run. It was on crazy. Mo Gabba day. On yeah, Mo my Gabba eight-year-old, day. my eight-year-old was like, "Dad, did you see it? Did you see it?" And I was like, <laughs> "Nobody, Dad's got to work." <laughs> but it, it it definitely has a it. Everything has a, has an impact uh, on it, and it's it, it's unfortunate. So, I mean, it was it was if I would lie if I say it wasn't going to help our company financially right. having the World Cup here, it would have big time. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we'll, elite promotions and elite tournaments will both be involved, but it's it's just it is what it is, and we have to move forward and and hopefully we'll we'll have another World Cup here in twenty or thirty years, and I'm still kicking. Um, Mike, Mike, um, one of the things, and I know you were close to the decision making or the committee working on this. Do you, and Terry has always kept me abreast of things. Is there still a chance Baltimore may get involved in terms of the World Cup and hosting a, a, a team or two, a country or two? Yeah, I, I think there really is. Um, we still have the opportunity to ho to kind of be the the home base for a couple countries. Um, and again, it, it depends on what their criteria is and where where what countries qualify and where they're going to be based at. Because this is it's going to be the biggest World Cup in the history of World Cups because of the amount of teams. And a lot of people don't know this, but the World Cup in 94 actually holds the attendance record for the World Cup, and there was only 24 teams. Right. Now there's 30, what, well, there's 32, and we still have the attendance record. So it's it, there's going to be some involvement um, from Baltimore, whether we're hosting the referees, whether, whether we're hosting a couple nations as their home base, whether – we have we have three major airports in within an hour of each other. Yeah. I don't think there's another city that has that. Um, you can't say New York because it takes about four hours to get from LaGuardia to Newark sometimes. <laughs> um, so it's it's I, I I I can't see us not being involved somehow. But again, it's FIFA. Yeah. I, yeah. I if I, yeah. I wish I could read their mind, I'd be a billionaire if I could. Gary, you got anything else for Mike Liber? What was wrong with FedEx Field, Mike? The, the, we we were told that DC and Baltimore were gonna were gonna merge, right? Because DC was out because FedEx Field sucks. What's wrong with FedEx Field? I think they have some infrastructure issues. Um, I mean, you saw you saw what happened with the the one game where the the yeah the fence the fell down yeah. and yeah. Um, I think that's that those are all fixable things. The one issue is it's not in DC. Um, I mean, it's not. There's no. There's nothing else around it. There's no there, where the fan zone would be an hour away. The because of the it, by by train by uh the train. Um, that's my question about Boston, though, Mike. Uh, it Fox, is, and that's for a Fox is like being in the middle. <laughs> it's being, it's like being in the middle of Laurel or something well, like that. Well, going to have their, I mean, I was in South Africa for the World Cup, and yeah. uh, you want to talk about a nightmare? Um, that was the biggest nightmare ever. 
we went to the USA England match and I was in a country in a city called Rustenburg, which is kind of in the, the north um, central part of the country. And you have the Savannah everywhere and um, you just you're driving and you come to the city and the stadiums, there's no you have to park in the city or outside about two miles from the stadium and trying to get getting to the stadium was fine because everybody's coming in staggered um, not everybody at the same time but leaving the stadium it, we it was it, there i mean everybody says there's queues you have to sit and sit in a queue but there were taxis that's all it was forty thousand people they're being transported taxis. by taxis <laughs> and it, it's just a, it was a nightmare wow. so think about this in foxborough you have that's a 60 65 thousand seat stadium and there's probably you're going to have locals going to it, of course, but the majority of them, that's going to be about 50,000 people that need hotels, that need some type of transportation because Foxborough Good. has only about 3,000, 4,000 hotels within and that that corridor. So they got to go back to Boston. How if they're drinking, how are they getting from Foxborough back to Boston? It's a nightmare. It's I mean, there are buses, of course, but not 50,000 you're not moving 50,000 people in buses. Right. So it's it's an issue. And um, that was our biggest shock on who got it over Baltimore was was Foxborough. Yeah. And everybody knows Kraft is real good friends with the, head of with FIFA. the FIFA president. And I do I know for a fact that that has anything to do with it? No, but it's, again, we, we were just yeah. 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 Hey, Mike, we really appreciate it. Whenever we want to talk soccer, we're going to turn to you okay yeah, absolutely I'm again always up the, for it. the two groups Thank are elite promotions group and elite tournaments both have websites with those names dot com at the end i made a great comeback didn't i gar you you really did stan i yeah. gotta give it to you all right his his name is mike liber and uh mike we really appreciate it that tournament business you've got is going gangbusters i, I appreciate it stan appreciate it gary all right thank you mike. all right we want to remind you that we've been brought to you by um, the friends at Costas Inn. CostasInn.com is the way to, you can order your food and then pick it up curbside without having to go in the restaurant. That's for steam crabs, crab cakes, steaks, salads, whatever you want. The Costas Inn, located at 4100 North Point Boulevard, phone number 410-477-1975. Gary and I apologize. And by the way, we also thank Mike Liber for joining us so quickly. We were due to have Mike Loxley on, the Maryland head football coach, and he had a scheduling conflict that came up um, at the last minute, and Mike jumped in, and we appreciate that, and we'll have Mike Loxley back on with you. Next week, Gary, our guest is going to be Steve Brunner from KMO Sports. They're the folks that are promoting the Maryland Cycling Classic, which is taking place over Labor Day weekend. All yeah, right. that's, so what is that, two, three years in the making, right? Because COVID uh, disrupted yeah, it. Yeah, they were supposed to have it last it year, is. and it got uh, bumped because of COVID. <laughs> also coming up uh, in the fall is the uh, Maryland Five Star event, the second time that will be held out in out in, at Fair Hills. That's it for us. Sounds um, good. Ross Grimsley and I are on Monday at 2 o'clock with Tim Kirchin, Hall of Famer Tim Kirchin, will join Ross Grimsley and I because we have the barbecue that night, Gary Stein. Right. At, at, at Coach Loxley's house. And you house. and I got – I oh, want you to go house. up. I want you to challenge him as to why he had to cancel, okay? <laughs> oh, I'll well. talk to his wife. You go up and say, hey, what happened? <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to have to do all the dirty work for you, Stan. It's all the heavy lifting is all. Yeah. I'm all right. Again, good. for Mike Liber, Gary Stein, I'm Stan the fan from Pressbox and Pressboxonline.com. We'll see you down the road very soon. Bye. <laughs>